up, up and away. Master plans to grow Warnervale Airport have now been given the green light by Central Coast Council. After community consultation showed 75% of residents were in favour of further development. I think going beyond that more broadly, it's good for the Central Coast, really. Um, the uh, First of all, under the terms of the, uh, the Warnervale Airport Restrictions Act inquiry, I think council were required to put a... Um, a plan or a master plan in place for the future of the airport, which this is obviously part of that. And part of that is consulting with the community, which is obviously important, and we're all for that as well. Pricing it within a set of parameters. Uh, in April last year, I think I was the second day in the job or third day in the job, um, the, the council endorsed a, a basic framework for what it would like to see the airport develop it, and that is as a light aviation hub, um, not seeking to have large um, passenger jet aircraft, etc. there. The concept includes ideas such as regular passenger transport, live-in campus-style commercial pilot training and a parallel taxiway. We're now moving to the next stage, which will be a, an RFI, essentially a request for information from the industry to say what sort of um, uses would be viable and valid there, what the people would like to and how would, they might like to invest in that space. Uh, from that, we'll then develop a business case. The redevelopment of the airport also provides long-term security for Central Coast Aero Club and a training hub for future pilots. We've been um, touted as an anchor tenant for the airport, uh, quite rightly so. We've been here for you know 47 years, 48 years now, and we cleared the initial airport site. We've been a big presence on the coast for all that time. So very happy to be working with Council uh, on the future of the airport. Uh, we train pilots from first lesson right through to a commercial licence, which allows them to be paid to fly for a career. Uh, we've prepared hundreds, if not thousands of pilots for the airlines, for the military, for other general aviation operators. Uh, and we just wish to continue doing that. We're growing very, very quickly. So um, I'm actually uh, looking at employing two more pilots today. The airlines are forecasting a huge shortfall uh, and we're the initial step for all those airline pilots at the grassroots level. So we prepare everybody for those, those jobs. Uh, and we're servicing everyone from Sydney through to Newcastle, the only flying school between those two major centres. So, The development would not create a larger regional airport and the runway will not be extended. Uh, as we've said in many of our submissions, the um, aircraft size is largely determined or completely determined really by runway length. So um, if the runway is capped at the 1,200 metres that it currently is, that by definition uh, exempts all of the turbofan, turbojet, type airline aircraft, uh, which broadly um, uh, are called jet aircraft by the community, um, from being able to land here. Um, it's, it's nowhere near long enough. It would be almost have to be almost twice that length for them to accept those sorts of aircraft. Um, there's probably some scope to widen the sealed section of that runway. Um, there's only about 11 metres at the moment, so probably somewhere in the region of 20 to 30 metres would be more normal for places like Cessnock and Scone and Maitland, for example. Uh, that's a normal sort of size runway. Uh, but the length, will, if it remains the same, means that the Central Coast community will only have light aircraft. Sky Hull, Central Coast News.